Hello, this is Leo Tyndall, and I'm here to talk about Ubuntu and, by extension, all other Linux variants. So Ubuntu, what I have open here, is Ubuntu, as you can see, 14.04 uh, long-term support version, and this is a free and open source operating system. That, that's a lot of meaning packaged into one short little phrase, and uh, let's start with the basics. What's an operating system? Well, an operating system is required to use a computer for any kind of useful purpose. Essentially what it does is it allows the user to interact with the hardware without having to do tedious things like manually programming every single step. The operating system has several parts. One of the most important ones is the kernel. The kernel manages how programs execute on the CPU, how they interact with the RAM, which is the computer's memory, how they interact with the hard drives, disk drives, video systems, and pretty much every other part of the computer. It also manages things like loading drivers to allow the computer to work with external hardware, and ensuring that files are saved in the correct place on the drive so they can be retrieved at later time. Well, what about the free part and the open source part? In the case of Ubuntu, free and open source are actually being used to mean the same thing. Free not only as in beer, but as in freedom. Ubuntu is based on the Linux kernel, which was created by Linus Torvalds, which in turn was based on the Unix kernel created by Bell Labs and AT&T. This was used in mainframes and even a few very basic workstations and personal computers, but Linus Torvalds decided that he didn't want to have to pay a huge amount of money to get support and still have no ability to change the actual code that he was running on his computer. So, starting essentially from scratch, he created his own kernel. The GNU project, which is a major part of Ubuntu and many other Linux distributions, started up around Linus's invention and stands for GNU is not Unix. Essentially, they created a suite of free open source software that anyone could use, modify, share. You can do whatever you want with GNU software as long as you tell the people you're giving it to, or selling it to, that it is GNU software. But what does this mean to you, the user? Well, free usually means fewer bugs. When someone finds a bug, either they can fix it if they, they are a programmer, or they can tell some programmer about it, and that programmer can fix it. Patches come out very rapidly and aren't affected by corporate motives or the will of investors. Free also means more secure. There's no way to build a backdoor into a free piece of software because anyone who looked at the source code would see it immediately. You can use free software, as long as it's fairly popular, secure in the knowledge that there are no intentional backdoors. So I'm going to log in now and give you a demonstration of some of the large array of free software that exists in the Ubuntu ecosystem. I simply type in my password, tap enter. So this is the Ubuntu desktop. As you can see over here on the side, we have pre-installed, I didn't install any of this myself, a set of useful applications such as Firefox web browser, which is free software, LibreOffice, Writer, Calc and Impress, all of which are free software, the Ubuntu Software Center from which you can install free software, as well as some paid software, and System Settings, a set of free tools to configure your system. Clearly everything that is pre-installed on this computer is free. Now there is the option to install non-free software if you need it, such as the codecs for playing MP3s. Those are not open source and therefore they don't come pre-installed, but you can simply select an option and it will install them. This concludes lesson number zero. Starting with the next lesson, I will teach you how to actually use this incredible operating system, which is provided to you free of charge by Canonical and the Ubuntu community. 